system of the fuselage case. And by using the prime mover, the bottom of the case with the fuselage itself is eased squarely off the trailer and onto the assembly platform. Steady. Steady there. Just a bit more. Pull it right to the edge. Okay. Now, exactly at the back end of the shipping brace, the 10-inch section of floorboard is removed from the fuselage case bottom. Then a 10-inch section is cut out of the exposed 4x6 beams on each side. These cutaway sections, like the slot in the base of the platform, are important later in assembly. It is also necessary that the rear members of the shipping brace be removed. These members have been bolted and lightly welded in place. The bolts are removed and the weld is broken. That concludes the construction work. The crew chief can now begin to direct the actual airplane assembly. First, the engine cowling is taken off. This goes quickly if at least four men are assigned to the job. Now the engine must be cleaned. Kerosene or other suitable solvent may be used in removing the anti-corrosion compound sprayed over the engine before shipment. The carburetor and lower cylinders should be drained of any oil or moisture which may have accumulated. Also the spark plugs and connecting harness must be installed. These procedures should be done in accordance with instructions found in technical order number 02-1-1. While this is being done, the protective tape and other coverings are taken off to expose all openings and fittings of the fuselage, wings, and all other parts. After complete inspection of the work that has been done on the engine, the cowling may be replaced. During shipment, steel braces have supported the weight of the airplane. The braces are connected to these wing hinge or pin connections. The weight must be released and transferred to these steel resting pans. This is accomplished by turning up the jack screw just two or three turns. This is enough to relieve tension on the master bolt. Then the master bolt, which has actually carried the full weight of the plane, can easily be removed. The direction of the jack screw is then reversed. It is turned down until the weight settles on the steel resting pad. Now the hinge bracket may be removed. The hinge is then free and clear. And ready to receive the wing. To prepare for the wing assembly, we remove the pilot seat to provide more working space in the cockpit. Now, caution! Both aileron control rods must be inserted now, flush with the fuselage. It will be too late after the wing is on. The crew chief checks to be sure that all wing connection drift pins, bushings, bolts and tools are ready and on hand. When he's sure that everything is in its place, he can start to direct the actual wing assembly. It takes about 50 men to carry the wing of a thunderbolt. Easy does it. That baby weighs over 1,800 pounds. The trick here is to line it up straight.
Take it slow. Drop the wingtip just a little bit so that the bottom set of hinges can be lined up and connected first. After the lower set of hinges had been secured, the wingtip is lifted and the upper hinges are lined up. Both upper and lower wing and fuselage hinges are secured in the same manner. They are lined up with the aid of drift pins. When the hinges are in perfect alignment, the bushings are installed, always with the split side upward. A bushing inserter is used to drive the bushings through the hinges. The drift pin is forced out as the bushing is driven home. When all the bushings are in place, the men can ease off a few at a time so that the support they have been giving the wing will be released gradually. Next, the tapered bolts are inserted. The heads of these bolts should always be facing each other, pointing toward the inside of the wing. Tap and tighten, tap and tighten very carefully. Finally, the bolt is brought to correct tension with a two-finger pull on an eight-inch wrench until at least three threads are visible on the end of the bolt. Once both wings are on, we are ready to make all wing root connections, except for the cables and control rods. This requires a thorough understanding of the connections to be made and their location. Since these connections are in very tight quarters, let's look at an animated diagram. Here are the connections to be made at the left wing root. The fuselage is here, and the wing root here. Here are the connections which are found in both wings. The flap hydraulic lines the cannon plug, the aileron control rod, the landing gear and brake hydraulic lines, the uplock cables, and the gun heater tube. Now let's see the connections found only at the left wing route. They are the aileron trim tab cables, the static and pitot airspeed lines, and the oxygen line. Here's the situation on the right wing. In addition to the connections you see here, which are common to both wings, we have the fuel vent and the cockpit air scoop. Remember, at this point, we make all connections except the control rod and cable connections which should not be made until after the landing gear is down. In preparation for lowering the landing gear, a pit must be dug under each wing in line with the path that the wheels will take. This pit will have a maximum depth of about one foot at the point where the gear is fully extended. To lower the gear, wires which were attached to the uplock cables for shipping purposes are pulled at the wing route. The gear will now extend. Here is the reason we cut out that section of the platform it would have obstructed the passage of the wheel. Notice, too, that the pits are dug quite close to the platform. In order to bring the gear down to the full downlock position, it is necessary for two men to get behind and push. When the downlock position is reached, an audible click is heard.